in a text I asked you, there is a bar, okay, that is, that has the uh, fixed boundary condition, and I hit it. And uh, what if I have a bar in, in, for example, that has the spring. That means if the bar can be, this cross section of bar can be enlarged and getting small and large, things like, th things like that. Which case the speed of propagation is large? In this case is large because P over rho says, right? Okay. So when you shot here and using the wave equation we just obtained, that is d square p dx square is 1 over c square d square p over dt square. If the waves we are making obeys this governing equation, then we can we can communicate with the people in the United States from here, right? If I have a, a conduit or duct that is connected from here to the United States, then I can, I can send my signal to the United States or Russia because there is no damping. But what if I shout here? Can somebody in, for example, Busan can hear what I'm talking? No, why? Because there is no damping then he or she can hear. Why not? The reason is I'm shouting here and the propagation is no longer one dimension, right? It's spread out. Spread out. Therefore, we need to study three-dimensional acoustic wave. Even though there is no damping, no viscous force, the energy propagating in space is decreasing depending on the measures, the physical measures. Okay? That's why the, what kind of physical measures you are using is very important. Okay? The relation between the particle velocity and the density is governed by conservation of mass. That simply says that d rho dt, that is the change of density per unit volume with respect to time, okay, has to be balanced by d dx rho u. What is rho u? It's a net mass flux between dx, and this has to be minus, right? Okay. So that reviews what we learned in the last lecture. In the text, in the appendix, you can see the three-dimensional acoustic, how, the, the way to derive the three-dimensional acoustic wave, okay? And I hope, I'm, I, 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 I'm not hope, I uh, ask you to read the appendix two to understand how to get the three-dimensional uh, acoustic wave. Okay, now let me rewrite the linearized Euler equation.
and the conservation of mass okay is it right to put minus here wrong or right right okay Maybe somebody want to put a minus over here. Because if I put a minus over here, that means rate of change of, uh, I mean, net mass loss with respect to time has to be induced by net mass flux in, increase of net flux in. I mean, depending on your physical understanding, you, you can put this one over here or over here. Okay? And the state equation. Okay. Because this is a state equation, it depends on temperature, humidity, and so on. Okay? And what other six we also neglected to derive this equation? Okay. One thing we did was that is and we neglected it this term. Right? That means what? We neglected the convection. In other words, if I have mean flow over here and I shout, then this equation cannot predict. Okay. Now, what I can do is, because, because we have three physical parameters, P, U, and Rho, and the three equations, we can get the governing equation with one physical parameter, P or U or Rho. Okay, let me eliminate U and Rho from these three equations. Okay, now uh, to eliminate Rho and U, what I can do is I differentiate this with respect to x, then I will have d square p dx square, that is rho zero d square u dt dx. Okay? Right? And then I differentiate this respect to time. Then I have d square rho d t square, that is minus d square rho u d t dx. Okay? And then using this relation and eliminate this and this, then I can obtain the linearized acoustic wave equation. You may eliminate P and U over here and you will have the wave equation that takes independent dependent variable rho prime. Or you can eliminate P and rho and then obtain the wave equation with respect to velocity also. But well, those are related with these three equations. So, so essentially same equation. Any uh, questions up to now? Okay. So would, do you want me to explain again the constitutive relation? 